It just took us about five minutes to accomplish the last practice problem. What is your $1,000 equal at the end of three years if you get 3% interest rate? Now I'm going to show you how you can do it in about five seconds. Uh, Excel has a series of financial tools that will help cut down the time it requires to do these time value of money calculations. We're trying to figure out how much $1,000 today is worth in one, two, three years time, so in the future. So the Excel function is uh, also called FV. And if you ever have any question about what Excel functions mean, uh, click on your little FX at the top of the screen here, and it will tell you exactly what these functions mean. If you type in future value and click on this, double click, it will show you the key variables down here, rate, NPER, which is actually N, um, payment, we will talk about that uh, in the future, and then present value. And if you have any questions on exactly what these variables mean, you know, read the screen, more help on this function. Well, click on that blue link, and it will tell you in excruciating detail what each of these variables mean. So whenever you have confusion in Excel, do not fear. Use the resources at hand, um, and it actually it becomes very simple. So let's go back to our calculation that took five minutes, and let's do it in about five seconds. So we're trying to calculate the future value, and recall that our, our present value uh, was the $1,000, and the interest rate, I, was 3% keep our figures in the right uh, money percentage you know, <clears throat> notation here. And the number of periods n, so again, we were looking at three years, 3% 3 over three years. So n equals three. One thing to note, when I show i here, interest rate, as 3%, that is a annualized rate. n here, whenever you have a period, you have to make sure that you're showing apples to apples. So if you're talking three years, you also have to show an interest rate that is on an annual basis as well, 3% a year. This is not actually, you would think perhaps this is obvious, but when you start to look at debt calculations that we'll talk about in course number four, uh, often you're going to be talking about an annual rate, but you're going to be talking about monthly compounding. So you're going to have an N that's a monthly basis, and you're going to have an I that's an annual basis, so you have to convert one of the two so that they're both on the same periodic basis, whether it's monthly or annual. So we have all of our key variables here, uh, future value, present value, interest rate, and number of periods. These are the four key variables that you will see throughout the time value calculations uh, that we look at during this entire course. So under future value, the way you trigger the Excel um, formula is by the equal sign and you type in the name of the formula. So we know this is future value, FV, and then parentheses. And now here's the fun part. Uh, how do you know what to enter next? Again, read the screen. The screen here is saying future value, and then there's a series of variables here. The variable that is highlighted is what it's asking you to enter. So rate is in bold font. That means you enter rate. And it's very convenient. Look, when I actually touch upon the word rate here, it turns blue. So if you, again, have any confusion as to what that variable is, click on the blue, and it will pop up the explanation screen. So uh, next, let's select the rate. So the rate is 3%. And next, you put comma. The next variable you see in bold highlight is um, they call it NPER, that's the number of periods. I've shortened it to N. So let's select the cell with three, since we're talking about three years. And payment. So payment is actually zero in this case. And we'll talk about this again in course number four. Uh, this function is set up to do more than one thing. It's set up to evaluate the future value of a series of payments over time. Well, we're not looking at a series of payments over time. We're just looking at depositing an amount today and how much is it worth tomorrow. So there is no payment. You're not getting a payment from your savings account, though that would be nice, wouldn't it? So we're going to put zero in here. And the next variable is what we were really looking at. So I selected it already. Um, and you'll see on the screen here, PV is 
uh, in bold. So let's select our present value, which is the $1,000 that we are putting in the deposit or the savings account today. And that's it. So we have, again, we have the interest rate, we have the period, and we have the present value. And that will yield for us the same value, $1,900. $92.73 that we took five minutes to calculate. So granted, it took us a few more minutes here because I'm giving you an explanation, but if you were actually take the time to do this on your own, you could do it very quickly. Um, you'll notice that it shows a negative sign here. Again, this has to do with the way um, Excel is viewing inputs and outputs. Um, so you need to keep in context for yourself that you're not, this is not a negative to you, but this would be earning interest over time so if you keep that in mind, you can figure out when you have to consider this a negative or a positive. It's going to default to the negative, so we're just going to turn it positive by putting a negative sign in front of it. So there you have it.